Chichen Itza is Mexico's most visited Mayan site, the most studied, but it is also the most controversial. To this day, its complex of terraces, temples, and pyramids remains very mysterious. On the site, El Castillo is the first edifice that stands out. It is a 24-meter-high temple. It was the place of worship for the god Kukulkan, the feathered serpent. When the Spanish arrived in the mid-16th century, priests were still officiating in the Castillo. The pyramid works as a stone calendar. The four lateral stairways have as many steps as there are days in a year, and the 18 terraces are the 18 months of this calendar. The way the monument is oriented also reveals a remarkable mastery of astronomy. The Jaguar Temple is dual. It includes a low part that leads to the Castillo, with a jaguar throne and bas-reliefs telling of warrings and ceremonies where the feathered serpent is the protagonist, and the High Temple, open onto the Pelote Court and offering the best view to follow the games. Among the 15 pelote and ball courts of Chichen Itza, this one is the largest in all Mesoamerica. Pelote had a religious aspect to it and often ended with human sacrifice. In several places, bas reliefs represent the game. The teams wearing knee pads and rich sets of jewels and ritual sacrifices, where from the decapitated captain's neck, Serpents came out, symbolizing a new life. The field has exceptional acoustics. You can hear someone speaking at normal volume, even though they're standing 140 meters away. The Tsumpantli is a low altar where the skulls of the defeated were exhibited. The dozens of skulls carved in the low reliefs put the Maya's warring traditions forward, and this skull wall gave any tribe who wanted to attack the Toltec Maya some food for thought. Digs have unearthed skulls under this altar. Wandering among the ruins of such antique glory sends chills down your spine for the sheer beauty of the site, as well as for the seemingly dark and barbaric culture that authorized and even encouraged human sacrifice, which was the fuel of the constantly moving universe. Further along, the sacred cenote of the sacrificed, a natural well 60 meters large and 35 deep, inside which were found sacrificial objects such as jade jewels and also human remains. Returning to the main site, we discover the remains of another temple, Venus's platform. Careful restorations were made to the Chichen Itza site that used to cover a 25 square kilometer area in its time of glory. After a century of study, archaeologists are still trying to figure out the chronology of the site and exactly who the city's inhabitants were. We guess that Chichen Itza went through many different population waves between its peak within the Mayan civilization from the 7th century until the Toltec era in the 12th. This would explain representation of gods of both civilizations in the same magical place. The majestic warrior temple was built on top of a more ancient and smaller temple like the Castillo. A hippo-style room of 60 columns held a roof that has now disappeared. On the upper temple, serpentine columns typical of Toltec architecture frame a chakmol or sacrificial altar.
On the lateral wall side panels, Toltec themes, pelote players, jaguars, eagles, or feathered serpent heads alternate with the Maya's check masks. The Warrior Temple series of columns are spectacularly continued by the Thousand Column Group, a unique structure in the Mayan world. It has low reliefs of warriors in ceremonial dresses and prisoners in submissive postures. At the end of the succession are a square and another pellet ground. We are now at the El Caracol Observatory, the snail, dating back to the start of the post-classic era. Its unusual circular shape hides a spiral staircase leading to the upper floor. The main window above the entrance is placed in the exact spot where the sun sets on the 13th of August, the anniversary of the foundation of the Fourth World in 3114 BC. The largest building south of the Caracol, the Nuns, can never be fully restored. This huge gape is a reminder of the brutal investigation methods of 19th century explorers who used dynamite. The one who discovered the check moles made this one. Finally, at the extremity of the site is what should have been a royal palace. The Casa de las Monjas is covered in the most detailed pooks of the entire site. In homage to the genius of the builders, UNESCO classified this as a World Heritage Site in 1988. In 2007, the city was elected as one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. Chichen Itza represents the late post-classic Mayan period, which corresponds to Toltec influence. Fortunately, the Spanish did not destroy all traces of the ancient Mayan civilization. Located a little less than 50 miles to the south of Merida, Uxmal is an antique Mayan city from the Classic period. Its rise, peak, and fall cover a short period during the 9th and 10th century. The Del Adivino Pyramid, or Diviner's Pyramid, is Uxmal's most imposing monument. It appears as a 35-meter rocky mass with a temple on its top. The stones are so precisely cut and locked into one another that no plaster or mortar were used for the construction. One has to go through the bird square to fully appreciate the complexity of the diviner's pyramid. As is often the case, the structure was built and expanded over several periods, and its western face is designed so that the entrance appears as a creature's mouth, giving the ensemble the aspect of an animal. The bird square takes its name from the sculptures on the relics of its patio, holding 13 columns and four rooms. On the friezes are representations of plants and woven palm roofs, typical of Mayan peasant huts. It appears as though this structure was an administrative center. Further on, the Quadrangulo de las Monjas, the Nuns' Quadrangle. These are four elongated buildings surrounding a trapezoid patio. Its name does not designate its function. It was given by the Spanish discoverers who found it resembled the convents they knew. In reality, it served as a school for healers, astronomers, or priests. As Puck tradition requires, the bottom half of the wall strikes a strong contrast with the richly ornamented upper half, 
where the stone mosaic lattice work creates symbolic grooves, previously made with stucco and painted in bright colors. The pelot ground is not as well preserved. On top of the two lateral walls must have been for the stands. The rubber ball could be touched with neither hands nor feet, and the aim of the game was to get it through these rings. The ring was reconstituted from fragments found here. The translation of the glyphs engraved on it suggests the 9th of January, 905. This rattlesnake was the banister of the stands that have collapsed. The Ushmal complex is made up of several pyramids, temples and constructions. Unanimously recognized as the most complex masterpiece of Pulk architecture, the governor's palace did not need much restoration, having been exceptionally well preserved. It was built around the year 900 on an immense triple terrace. Two high and thin Mayan arches connect the main building to the two lateral parts. Above, the main entrance that opens in the axis of the planet Venus is a king wearing a feathered coiffure sitting down. Here is a torture stone. The platform upon which the two-headed jaguar throne rests was revealed by archaeologists to hold very precious and valuable offerings such as jewels. The House of the Turtles is a harmoniously sober building, with a series of turtles on its frieze which could represent the constellation of Orion, where the god of corn came from. The Great Pyramid of Ushmal. It stands 35 meters high on a square basis, 80 meters long on each side. The temple standing on the upper platform, accessible by a large stairway, was named the Temple of the Aras. From its summit, it appears that Ushmal's monuments are emerging from a dense green ocean of forest. Palenque is a pre-Columbian city founded around the year 100 BC and located in the Mexican state of Chiapas. It is one of the most impressive Mayan sites. It is average sized compared to other cities, but nevertheless distinguishes itself through its architectural and sculptural richness. The city was already abandoned at the time of the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. The first large building that one encounters is the Temple of the Inscriptions. It is the pyramid where they buried King Pakal I, who reigned during the city's golden age in the 7th century. Next to it, the Temple of the Red Queen, who may have been his wife. Pakal I, the most famous Mayan king, ascended to the throne in 615 and would reign until 685. He constructed a large part of the palace and temples found today in Palenque. The Temple of the Inscription sits atop a nine-level pyramid 20 meters high. Five doors open onto a rectangular room that adjoins three more rooms to the back. Inside, a small staircase descends through the pyramid, leading to the king's tomb. 
The complex called the palace is the largest structure unearthed on the site. We don't really know its purpose, but it could be administrative or even ceremonial, also built under the reign of Pakal I. The Palace of Palenque, like all the Mayan palaces, is a succession of courtyards surrounded by houses that have extremely elongated forms. This form is tied to the use of the corbel arch, a construction technique that is universal amongst the Maya. Architecturally, the tower is exceptional. Added in the 8th century, it's an observatory. Its summit was reconstructed. The palace was built on several levels, revealing what's underneath. The throne room is the most well-preserved building of the complex. The various temples and structures of the Mayan site of Palenque are grouped around a great square which is crossed by an aqueduct. The remains of a ball court are clearly visible. The Temple of the Cross at the top of its pyramid is part of a group of three arranged around another square. The temple, the facade of which has collapsed, was built by the son of Pakal I and was consecrated in 685. It is topped by a perforated crest on the summit. The role of this temple was to assure the kinship between the sky, the ancestors, and the ruling lineage. The Temple of the Foliated Cross was dedicated to water and agriculture. It has also lost its facade. The third temple, called Temple of the Sun, has remained in a good state. It was dedicated to the underworld and war. Engravings are visible on the walls between the doors, and on the central panel you can still see figures surrounding a shield on which there's the head of a jaguar. The perforated crest on the summit, decorated with stucco and paint, is very well preserved. When the Mayas founded Palenque in the pre-classic era, around the year 100 BC, it was a small, mainly agricultural village that benefited from numerous springs and waterways. Today, the uncovered area of the site is barely three square kilometers, which represents less than 10% of the surface area of the city at its height. There remain over 1,000 structures covered by the forest. The Temple of the Count is part of the Northern Group. It owes its name to its discoverer, Count Valdeck. This elegant structure has a five-level base, topped by three temples which have retained all of their original decorations. It was, without any doubt, a major site in the city of Palenque. Numerous ceremonies were practiced there by the elites. Palenque was an important Mayan center during the Classic Age, between the 5th and 9th centuries. Through successive wars and alliances with the neighboring cities of Tikal and Calakmu, Palenque held an influential position in the region at the end of the 9th century. Despite that, emigration began and little by little the sites were abandoned as the forest covered over them again. In the 16th century, at the time of the Spanish conquest, the region was virtually uninhabited. And it was only in the 19th century that archaeologists rediscovered it, hidden under the vegetation. Palenque enjoyed a quite distinctive architecture, possibly facilitated by the presence of easily malleable and shapeable limestone. The architects of the city innovated by reducing the arches, which created interiors that were more open and an architecture that was more airy. It took a lot of time and resources to rediscover the buried splendors of one of the most beautiful Mayan cities in Mexico.
the lords of which claimed that their lineage went back to the creation of the world, which took place in the year 3114 BC in Mayan mythology. Deep within the grandiose wilderness lies the Maya city of Tikal, the city of Echoes, which was inhabited from the 6th century BC to the 10th century AD. It is one of the more important sites of Mayan civilization. The ruins spread out over a surface of 16 square kilometers and include over 3,000 structures. Around the main plaza at the heart of Tikal stands a number of remarkable buildings. The site's most emblematic monument, Temple No. 1, characterizes the complex's architectural style. Built around 734, the pyramid upon which the temple was founded rises 47 meters high, and a single flight stairway leads to the actual temple. Mayan civilization appeared around 1000 BC and the classic period ran from 200 AD to 700 AD. The post-classic period followed it. Along the western side of the main plaza, Temple 2 faces Temple 1. It is also known as the Temple of the Masks and was built around 700 AD. It is 38 meters high. It was devoted to the sovereign's wife, buried under Temple One, and the queen's portrait is sculpted on the lintel of the door located at the top of the sanctuary. Like other temples in Tikal, the upper part of the sanctuary included three adjoining rooms with lintel-supported doors. Contrary to Temple One, no tomb has been found here. The umbrella crest displays eroded sculptures of masks. Located north of the main plaza, the Acropolis is a complex whose construction dates back to the pre-classic period, around 350 BC. It was long used as the necropolis of the sovereigns of Tikal. The tomb at the heart of the complex is attributed to the founder of the dynasty. Upon each royal burial, new temples were added atop older structures. In the 9th century AD, in the post-classic period, 43 steles and 30 altars were erected, some of which are engraved with the hieroglyphic texts and bare sculpted royal portraits. Four temples were built on the south side, facing the main plaza and Temple 2. They are now hidden by the vegetation. The central Acropolis is a huge complex of residential and administrative palaces where the royal families of Tikal and their relatives resided. The complex sprawls out over 1.5 hectares and includes 45 buildings and six courtyards. Malar Palace and the five-story palace are among the most remarkable buildings in this complex, which, like the North Acropolis, expanded organically over a 200-year period. The buildings and palaces are linked by a series of stairways, halls, and gates. Following Taza Road to the west, we reach Temple 3. It is the last great pyramid temple to have been built in Tikal. Also known as the Temple of the Jaguar Priest, it was built under the reign of Black Sun around 810 AD. The pyramid is 55 meters high, and the sanctuary at the top includes two rooms. To the south, a bit out of the way, amidst the lush jungle, stands the second largest pyramid temple of Tikal, Temple 5. Rising 59 meters high, it was built around 700 AD. The main stairway is 20 meters wide and has 90 steps. The railings are 2.6 meters wide and rise to the top of the stairway.
Nearby, the Plaza of the Seven Temples is lined to the east by a row of nearly identical temples and a series of palaces. The buildings in the surrounding jungle subtly blend, creating a very beautiful sight. But the glory of Tikal did not last. Though it was one of the greatest cities of classic Mayan civilization with a population of over 50,000, Tikal's only water supplies came from 10 reservoirs that stocked rainwater. The lack of springs, rivers, and lakes in the surrounding area underlines an amazing fact. This great city was built and flourished with only harvested rainwater. This dependency on seasonal rainfall made Tikal particularly vulnerable to prolonged droughts, which, according to some, could have played a role in the collapse of classic Mayan civilization in the 9th century. Further down lies a site forgotten by the Mayas themselves, El Mundo Perdido. Archaeologists have named it the Lost World because the surrounding jungle brought to mind the eponymous novel by the author Arthur Conan Doyle. Rising 30 meters high with stairways on all four sides, the Lost World's pyramid has a flat roof capable of supporting a superstructure built with perishable materials. The pyramid dates back to the late pre-classic period, in other words, to the beginnings of the Christian era. It was the biggest edifice at Tikal until the 7th century. Mundo Perdido is a complex of closed structures. Due to its distant location, it has remained intact and was not affected by the expansion of Tikal in the Classic period. It constitutes one of the most ancient inhabited sites of Tikal. With three small buildings to the east, the pyramid forms an ensemble which is believed to be of astronomical significance. It was decorated with stucco masks representing the sun god. Rising like a guard above the jungle, the pyramid is a reminder that there are thousands of ancient structures in Tikal and that only a fraction of them have been excavated, since the site was, for many centuries, entirely covered by the jungle. The archaeological site of Copan is located deep in the jungle. Copan is an ancient Mayan city which reached its glory in the 7th century AD and was abandoned around the 10th century. It was designated a World Heritage Site in 1980. The most beautiful structure at Copan is undoubtedly the hieroglyphic stairway of Temple 26, located just south of the ceremonial courtyard. Rising over 21 meters high, it is entirely covered in hieroglyphics. Thanks to interpretive research, we now know that its construction began under the reign of the 13th king of the Copan dynasty, and that it was completed by the king's son, Smoky Squirrel, in 755 AD. The glyphs engraved on the stairway constitute the longest known Mayan text, with over 2,200 motifs engraved in the stone. Unfortunately, of the 63 steps, only 15 have been found in their place, five of which have been partially destroyed. The portraits of the five kings who preceded Smoky Squirrel are displayed at the stairway's midpoint. On the main square stands an altar devoted to the god Kukulkan, winged snake. The altar bears a two-headed image of the cosmic being. In line with the ideology that developed in Mayan cities during the early classic period, political and religious authority were paired together. The kings of Copan were divine kings, mediators between the human and the supernatural worlds. Large monuments were built during their time. The Acropolis's west courtyards holds Temple 11. The temple was built in the 8th century, during the reign of Yashpak, the 16th and last great king of Copan. The architectural contributions of this king were among the city's greatest. This very elaborate temple was designed as a portal to the netherworld.
It is decorated with beautifully sculpted serpent heads and heads of other ape-like creatures. In the front, the text on Altar Q has been thoroughly translated. Built in the year 755, it describes the dynastic history of Copan and depicts the 16 members of the dynasty seated Indian style, with the founder passing the scepter of power to Yashpak. Overlooking the town's main plaza, the pyramid of Yashpak rises 30 meters high. It was the king's last construction. If this building seems strange, it is because, for unknown reasons, the pyramid was erected above the previous temple, without either destroying or damaging it. The greatest architectural achievement of Copan is perhaps seen in Temple 22. This temple was designed as a model of the primordial mountain in Mayan cosmology. On the upper floor, many stone skulls are displayed to symbolize passage to the underworld. In the ruins of Temple 18, reliefs representing the last great king of Copan, Yashpak, can still be seen. Temple 10 displays the architectural technique of corbelled vaults used by the Mayas. Stel D is located north of the main plaza. It represents one of the dynasty's major kings, 18 Rabbit, in the year 736. He is depicted here under the traits of an aged god. Many steles have been attributed to him. Hundreds of steles have been identified in Mayan country, coupled with small altars like this one here, the Turtle Altar. Stel B also represents the 13th king, alias 18 Rabbit, during his ascent to the throne. Sculptors used a particularly soft material, volcanic turf, and the steles have been sculpted in high reliefs. Most Mayan steles were visibly painted in vivid colors such as red, yellow, and black. The steles are oriented east-west so as to be illuminated by the rising and setting sun. Each stele, paired with its altar, represents the king god performing a ritual during which he embodies a divinity such as Chak, the corn god. During the 7th century, Copan became one of the most powerful Mayan cities. This period corresponds to the reign of the 18 images. The epithet 18 rabbit was due to an error in transcription. Copan's golden era reached its end when 18 rabbit was captured and sacrificed by another Mayan tribe. The end of the dynasty, however, did not provoke the sudden and brutal collapse of Copan, contrary to what occurred in other classic Mayan cities. From the 9th to the 13th centuries, the population slowly decreased and the city was eventually abandoned. Just like Tikal and Chichen Itza, the archaeological site of Copan is one of the most interesting pre-Columbian sites, into the heart of Mayan country. At the tip of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, in a region called the Riviera Maya, lies Tulum, a rare archaeological site facing the sea. The coastal city of Tulum was a fortress of merchants whose foundation dates back to the year 564, according to inscriptions. But most of the vestiges date back to the late post-classic period in the 13th century AD. Tulum is a Mayan word for fence, which is easily understandable given the massive protective walls that surround the city. 
the fortifications surround the main sector of the ancient city on three sides, which includes most of the city's monumental architecture, its temples, altars, tombs, and buildings of the city's leaders. The Temple of Frescoes is the most interesting and the best preserved. The facade displays a double molding decked with rosettes, human figures, and intertwined spirals. According to the archaeologists, they represent supernatural beings who lived in the underworld and who, according to legend, favored agriculture and vegetative growth. These frescoes, painted blue and white, constitute one of the most important pictorial depictions of the Mayan period. The Castillo is the site's most impressive building. It is seen overlooking the Caribbean Sea. The top of the building includes two rooms and three openings supported by two columns in the shape of a snake. It was built on an old temple which has served since as a substructure. The side that faces the sea is entirely protected. Further away, the Temple of the Descending God is made up of a small platform on which a one-room temple was built. It displays personifications of the Rain God, the Sun God, and the Moon Goddess. The Palacio is the House of the Great Lord. Located on the main road of Tulum, its main facade displays a portico with six entrances formed by four columns. The edifice has a total of 13 entrances and it is the biggest building in the city. The main entrance to the House of Columns is also made up of four columns that supported the roof. A divinity is represented on a wall. Because Tulum was built on the highest peak along the coast and because of its network of defensive walls, the city was a privileged site for the exploitation of maritime resources and for trade and commerce with other Mayan cities. Including Coba, located 40 kilometers from here. It is the greatest site in the Yucatan Peninsula. It stretched out over 70 square kilometers, and at its peak, the city had a population of 50,000. The city was occupied as early as the first century BC, as revealed by traces of low platforms and constructions made of wood and palm. However, most of the city's monuments were built in the classic period of Mayan civilization, between 500 and 900 AD. The Coba site is divided into different areas that are linked by stone paths. The first area displays a 25-meter-high temple, as well as a ball court which is easily identifiable with its hoops through which the ball had to pass. Representations of prisoners are engraved on the walls. More than 30 limestone steels, altars, and panels representing dignitaries have been discovered on the site. They date back to the 7th century. A complex of modest-sized buildings is quite remarkable, for it regroups the most recent monuments of Coba, built during the early post-classic period in the 14th century. Named the Paintings Group, its name alludes to the fragments of frescoes seen on the main temple. This temple and its annex buildings were made with the materials and dress stones of older temples. The temple of the Nohokmul group stands atop one of the highest pyramids of the region. In Maya, Nohokmul means large hill. The pyramid was built in the classic period around the 5th century, most likely to celebrate the holy power of Koba's dignitaries and to serve as the last residence for the members of the ruling families. The temple's peak was built 800 years later. The Makanhok group is made up of low platforms with small temples and altars.
Steels commemorating events that affected the members of Koba's ruling class, which included some women, are seen here. It is believed that this site was devoted to funerary ceremonies. After the year 1000, the city lost its political importance, but seems to have retained its symbolic and religious power, which enabled it to flourish again between 1200 and 1500, until the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors. Located in a forest, the site of Koba has a wild and untamed atmosphere, which truly gives the visitor the feeling of being an explorer. Located in Mexico, Rutapuc is in a very fertile region in the vicinity of Merida on the Yucatan Peninsula. It contains several Mayan sites, built between the 8th and 10th centuries AD, connected by paved pathways that traverse the forest. This complex brings together the cities of Labna, Sayil and Caba, all of which have a wealth of ruins. The city of Caba, or Strong Hand, covers three square kilometers and contains several palaces, stone buildings and stepped pyramids. The Great Palace, which you reach by a large staircase, is an imposing and monumental structure made up of a group of buildings that are all on the same platform. This immense three-level building, also called the Palace of Miyamakab, the god of the rising sun, contains around a hundred rooms. Its layout is simple and not very elaborate, which corresponds to the early Puk style, with a frieze that is made out of groups of three small columns. The monotony of the ensemble is broken by the addition of two openings that have a central column with a cube-shaped capital. It's one of the most well-preserved monuments in Kaaba and was the residence of its rulers. On its right, structure 2C6, better known as the Kod's Poop, is the most imposing structure in Kaaba. also called the Palace of the Masks, this 46-metre-long building, built on a 3-metre-high platform, is a typical example of the late Puk style. The unique thing about this palace is its facade that is entirely decorated with an uninterrupted succession of stone masks with long noses shaped like hooks, which represent the god Shark. These masks of the rain god appear abundantly on the other buildings throughout the site. Their presence can certainly be explained by the rarity of rain in this very dry region that has no river. The Mayans who lived here thus depended on rain alone, so the god of rain was very important and revered. The palace is composed of ten rooms arranged in five rows of two, and the numerous, very elaborate vestiges have been indexed in order to better understand the mystical meaning of this site. Each of these three interconnected territories actually correspond to a Mayan city, vassal to the neighboring Uxmal, which at that time was the administrative center of the surrounding territory. The second site, Labna, or the old house in ruins, bears its name well. It's a Mayan ceremonial center in ruins. Like the rest of the structures in the Puk region, the site dates from the terminal classic period, and a date corresponding to 862 was even found inscribed in the palace. Shaped like an L, 
It stands on a terrace and is composed of 67 rooms spread across two levels, the whole thing forming a structure that is 120 meters long. The first level has 40 rooms and a facade decorated with the traditional masks of the god Shahak. The building went through at least 12 phases of construction, and while some sections served residential purposes, others were used for administration, and it seems that all these separate buildings were later brought together. The archaeological site of Labna is also known for its arch, a Mayan construction that is 6 metres high and 13 metres wide with magnificently carved stone. Its facade is decorated with frescoes and sculptures that represent a stylized serpent and masks of shark. It's possible that this arch was used as a passageway for a high-ranking family to move between a residential area and one that was more administrative. It separates two small one-room buildings with doors that are topped by small miniature huts where there are still some remnants of painting. On the other side of the arch stands El Mirador, a pyramidal structure with a temple on the top. Virtually all that's left of the original pyramid is a pile of stones. The three-room temple with its five-metre-high crest has survived and now resembles a watchtower. Dating from the late classical era, it's one of the oldest buildings in Labna. Originally, the crest was ornamented with colossal figures, which have now been broken or lost. After the visit, you can take the ancient path that goes through the forest to reach the third site of Ruta Puk, Sail. Sail also reached its high point at the end of the classic period, around the year 900, and it was home to around 17,000 inhabitants. Built in a fertile valley, Sail was certainly the main agricultural centre of the Ushmal region. One of the most representative buildings of the Puk style is the main palace, which is composed of three levels with multiple rooms. Both the interior and exterior of the palace are decorated with frescoes and masks, bearing the image of Shark, and there are also depictions of the celestial serpent. The Palace of Sail has a long central staircase which connects to every level and leads to the summit of the building, which is classically topped with a temple. From the steps of the Great Palace, one can see the remains of important buildings, including a stadium and several small palaces. The foundations of thousands of small houses can also be seen. The site also contains a Mirador temple, whose crest was once painted red. Very damaged, it was a pyramidal temple, but there's not much left of it. Just a building with two half-collapsed rooms. Not far from the temple, a stele representing a figure with an enormous phallus could be a god of fertility. Ruta Puk clearly shows the interconnection and specialization of the different Mayan sites at the end of the first millennium on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Mm-hmm.